If you're familiar with the Inotion enabled products that we sell on alpscontrols.com, then you already know how their wireless technology has revolutionized the way that your controls are installed and configured in your building projects. So there have been some exciting uh, technological developments with an ocean products recently and uh, so I wanted to talk to you about them today with uh, Kurt McCormick who is the technology director here at alpscontrols.com and in that position he, he has a lot of interaction with uh, our customers and the products that they're using on their projects and he's done a bunch of testing on, on these products as well as others. So Kurt, what's, uh, what's different uh, with the new InOcean products that we're looking at here? Well, the initial flagship version of InOcean was 315 megahertz, and the distance was rated for 100 to 150 feet. Yes, it'll go 100 to 150 feet, but it pretty much has to be under perfect conditions. Uh, because in a building, when this thing is uh, controlling uh, lighting and uh, thermostats and all that kind of stuff, the signal has to go around things, right? It has to go through walls, filing cabinets, stuff that you would have in a building. Exactly. In our building, we have a lot of uh, metal doors. Uh, I know uh, the areas above and below our floors have really big I-beams, three feet I-beams. We have a lot of metal filing cabinets. Um, metal studs in the wall, uh, just, a, just a whole lot of obstacles that can really interfere with the, uh, the InOcean signal. So, so the wireless signal is not perfect in going on and around those kinds of obstacles? Exactly. Okay. Uh, under perfect conditions, like the, the spec sheets and the cut sheets call out 100 to 150 feet. I've, I've seen it actually even go further than that. Um, but in most cases, even in our building, we found a few areas that under 40 feet, we, we had an occasional issue with it. But for the mm -hmm. most part, I mean, it works really well. These new improvements with them uh, switching to 902 megahertz is, is something that we really need to show everybody. I think it's really exciting. Well, going from 315 megahertz to 902 megahertz, that's huge, right? Uh, yeah, it's, it's kind of like our cell phones. Years ago, we had the big beast of a, a cell phone that was Yeah, it was like a brick. Like a, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And now we have these and, and probably some even smaller. Um, and, you know, back then, with the analog signal, we had drop calls and everything, and it was on a lower frequency also, just like the 315 was. So stepping it up to the 902 megahertz is really, no pun intended, breaks the walls down and breaks the barriers down and allows you to, to get around and, and through some of those previous structures that may have caused an issue with, with signal quality. So there's fewer dead spots, there's longer reach, it's, it's a stronger, better signal. Exactly. Terrific. Exactly. Well, you know what, we're not just gonna sit here and tell you about it. Kurt and I have done some demonstrations around our office using the two signals and uh, we're going to show you exactly what those demonstrations look like. Okay, so now we're going to demonstrate the difference between the 315 megahertz frequency and the new 902 megahertz frequencies. Uh, for the 315 megahertz controller, you can see that's represented by an orange LED light. And then the 902 megahertz controller is represented by a green LED light. I'm going to stay here in the studio. Uh, Curtis is going to take the two switches and uh, go on a little field trip around the office right now. Okay, so I'm obviously still in the same room as our controller. So here is the 315 and here is the 900. So let's go check out more of the office. Okay, so we'll start here in Ken's office where um, as you can see out in the hallway, there's some filing cabinets out there, and this would typically be where we uh, put another switch. So we'll turn this on and off. And as you can see, that worked. And we put the 900 here, and it worked there. One thing we found out is in the corner of some of the rooms when we're um, near the edges of the outside of our building, uh, we found that um, it's not always successful, and this was one of them. So if I press the uh, 315, you can see that it does not come on. And if I press the 900, uh, you will see that it comes on. So that's this is just one of the areas that's like that. No 315, and 900 is fine. So here we're a little bit further uh, into the building. The uh, controllers are on the other side of one, two, two walls from where I'm at now. So we'll do a test of these and, and see how they work here. Um, here's the 315 and here's the 900. So we're still good uh, right here, which is what we uh, thought would probably happen. Let's see what happens when we get more towards the other end of the building. 
Now we're in Dave's office, which is the, the extreme opposite end of the building from where Ken's office was. So this is typically where the, the uh, switch or sensor would be located with 315. And you can see that works there. And our 900 works also. But during our, our initial test before doing the video, we also tried something that we found out that didn't work. Our building is a pretty much exactly 100 feet long. So this would be a place where, you know, in your building, it might be a reasonable distance away. It just happens to be the end of our building. So when I try this here, you'll see that it doesn't work. So if I go to the 900 megahertz, 902 actually, you'll see that it does successfully work. So in the extreme ranges of the sensors, uh, the 100 to 150 feet, besides everything that goes between point A and point B, you can see that that range can be fairly reduced um, using 315. Okay, so that was in Dave's office. Now uh, I wanna show you something that's a little more to the extremes uh, when it comes to the range of these uh, switches. Typically it was unheard of to do what we're gonna do right now, but um, we just think it's pretty exciting for you to see that, that um, how improved the range actually is. And again, we're in a building here that's 100 feet, so we're well within the range, and we do have a couple problems here and there, but for the most part, the 315 works well. We just wanna show you the extremes of the, the uh, 902. Okay, so now we're halfway between the second floor of our building and the first floor of the building next door. And we'll test both of these. So here's the 315, which still works. And here's the 900 that still works. So now we're all the way at the back of our building that's next door. And I have the 315 and 900. The uh, receivers that you see in the other shot here, they are in the middle of the next building on the second floor. So here's the 315, it does not work. Here's the 900, and it works fine. So I'm looking at a little monitor, that's how we know whether it's working or not. So we're, we're, we're not fooling you on this, we actually have a, a, a second monitor here. the other end of the building. Let's do a test right here of our 315. And it does not work. So let's try the 900. And it does work. So as you can see, we're in the building next door and the signal actually is making it this far. We saw that the 315 wasn't very reliable from the other end of the building, but so far the 900, 902 has actually worked everywhere that we've tried. Let's try it. Okay, so we've seen that the increase from 315 megahertz to 902 megahertz makes a big difference even just here in our office uh, in terms of eliminating the dead zones and uh, uh, providing a stronger, more reliable signal. Exactly. I was actually really surprised when we tried to test it between floors just to see if it would work and um, it, it works. Now, are these products supposed to normally be used between floors like that? Actually, for the most part, they're meant to be used on a horizontal plane from each other. So wherever you install your receiver, you should be on the same floor as it. But I, just from our tests, I could see that if you try it and it works and, and you try it enough and it works reliably, then you know it'd be pretty much up to the customer to decide if they want to do that or not. So of course a lot of the suppliers whose products that we sell on alpscontrols.com currently embed an ocean technology right into their products. Yes, today for our demo purposes we use the Lumra switches with can to go controllers. We can get products from Leviton. We sell a lot of their products. Functional devices, I think, uh, use them too. Yep. Exactly. It seems a bunch like of others. Almost every week we're adding new products. A lot of, we have some zero to 10 volt dimmers now. We have uh, devices that you can connect to a dimmable ballast that allow you to do uh, a wireless zero to 10 volt signal. So it's pretty exciting. And everybody across the board is adopting the 902 um, frequency. Yep. And it's my understanding that 315 is still going to go on for a long time. So if you've started a system that's 315, uh, you'll still be able to buy those products uh, for a while now. Terrific. Thanks for watching.